I'm Teresa, and I'm going to give you my two cents on the care and instruction of uh, cleaning and um, anointing a shofar. First, we'll need some press and seal. And I like this because it's got the sticky on it, and you definitely want to seal up the end. cleanser and it's antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, and all the antis. Very cleansing. It's eight cups of water and then I'm going to put four tablespoons of this cleanser. And you want to do this once or twice a year. It all depends on how much you use it. Is that three or four? Four. And I do have this peroxide out. If you use peroxide, it's going to bubble up some of the marrow and um, it's, it's antiseptic and it does have a little bit of a bleaching agent in it. So you want to be careful with that. You don't want to do that more than once. But this right here we're going to do twice. We're going to let it sit in here for 20 minutes, then we'll rinse it out and do it one more time. It ought to take at least four cups. Set your timer for 20 minutes. It's not leaking and it's just cleansing and absorbing and all the antis are going on in there. The antifungal, anti-mold, anti-bacteria. It's getting it really nice and clean inside. 20 minutes. It's been 20 minutes. We're going to empty this out. Well, it's a good four cups. Well, okay. Jostle around, and it's still holding up nicely on the end, so we are going to do one more round of 20 minutes. Smelling fresher all the time. So this is our final rinse. We'll pour it out.
The next thing we're going to do is anoint the outside of it. So now I'm going to take extra virgin olive oil, one half teaspoon. Oil goes a long, long way. And then seven drops of frankincense, essential oil. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven just because seven's a good number. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. And then you just start kind of loving on it. All the all the grooves. You can tell the dry areas. And once you start getting enough oil on there, you're just gonna rub it and dry spots, you'll, you'll know. This is a um, real sweet time when you're having this time anointing the shafar. It's, uh, well, you'll know it when you start doing it. It's just a real sweet time before the Lord and this beautiful instrument that he's given us. It's such a privilege to take care of it, to sound it. I think you'll be able to see it's got a nice sheen to it. And you know, you'll probably have to do it more than once. You let it set and it absorbs it. And my friend Samuel has told me, and this sounds like a brilliant idea, and I will probably do this in the future. Before you take that uh, wrapping off, he has poured um, um, olive oil up to the brim and set it in there for 10 to 20 minutes. And that helps with the cracking and the drying because they just do that, they just dry. And... But how beautiful is that? And it smells good. And you just love on it for a while. And then you'll come back probably in 10 minutes and you'll see the spots that you missed that, that need a little more attention. But isn't that beautiful? This looks beautiful and I'll probably need to come back and anoint it, um, you know, two or three times. But it does need time to dry and drain. So at least four hours you will want to let it drain well and dry completely before the last and final step. Okay, now that we have uh, washed the inside of our shafar twice with the thieves in the water and anointed the outside with frankincense oil and the um, extra virgin olive oil. It's looking pretty and shiny. You can see it. And it's smelling nice, but this is the final. This is the final part of cleaning, uh, caring for your shafar from the inside out. One thing that uh, I would like to tell you, and I probably have already said this, is this is something that you're not gonna have to do the washing more than once or twice a year. This that I'm about to do, you could do it every day, a couple of times, I mean, whenever you want to do it, just to freshen the um, aroma, especially if you're going to be sounding at an event. You don't know if the Holy Spirit is going to call on you to um, sound His voice or just release His breath. And the releasing of His breath is a lot more. And you don't want anything but a fresh, sweet aroma coming out of um your shafar. So you will need for this last step, um, you will need a incense burner and you need the kind that has the screen uh, so you get the air so it circulates. 
uh, you can get this online. It's going to cost you about 10 bucks. Then they're, they're um, quick charcoal lighting. Um, it, it comes from Three Kings. Also, you can get that on um, Amazon online. So we will go ahead. Oh, and you're going to need salt, just regular table salt. And the most important is the frankincense. Now, we use the frankincense oil on the outside. This is the resin. This is the solid resin. And you'll want to break it up in little pieces before you start um, burning it because it can get very smoky. It can set off your house smoke alarm if you're not careful. So we will go ahead and start the quick light charcoal. And it's pretty cool. It'll start kind of sparking. And it will run from one end to the other. And its indentation right there is where you're going to put your salt. But you're going to want it to run all the way across before you apply your salt. The reason why you want to use your salt is you want the salt to be kind of a buffer between the heat of the charcoal and your incense, your, your resin frankincense for two reasons. You don't want it to burn it. You want it to release the smoke. And the smoke is, well, let's face it, the frankincense, he asked for it on his birthday, didn't he? So he, he really, really likes that aroma. There's healing properties in it. Um, it, it is just, it, it's a blessing. It will bless you during your time of worship. It's going to uh, put a pleasing aroma in his voice, his kol adonai, his, his breath. So it's just, it's just a sweet, sweet thing. So I'm going to apply the salt. And just by experimenting, I realized that I don't have to put a whole lot. You just want to cover that indentation in the middle to keep it from landing on the the coal, you just want to have the salt kind of heat up. And then you go in and get you some pebbles here of the resin. And the little smaller pieces work better than a big chunk. And you see it starts smoking for you. Then you take your shafar and you place it. But be careful, you don't wanna you don't wanna touch your shafar or heat it up too much. Let's see you get it going. And you're gonna keep on until you see the smoke coming out of the mouthpiece. And I'll show you how cool it it will just hang out inside your shafar. And it just permeates all the way through it and just blesses it. I have a breeze going here making it more difficult. something you need to do, you know, don't be under an air-conditioned vent or a fan. That would help things, too. I think I see it. I do. Okay, we have achieved our goal. I hope you can see that. From the mouthpiece, I don't know if you can see it. I think you can see that. But then you would just let it hang out for like a good five minutes. And this will last probably 30. Where you just keep reapplying your frank frankincense. And we'll let it sit there and you can hang out with your shapar or you can go do something and then come back. And then you just do his breath.
pretty cool. And then do it again. And you just continue to do this as long as you really want. And before you go to an event or sound for your family or uh, apply his breath to um, a room or a congregation at an event, you're just wanting to freshen it up a little bit and it will be a fresh anointing and really bless you. I hope that caring for your shofar from the inside out has blessed you and you find it useful. And um, if you would like, just push the button of subscribe and I hope to see you again. Hi.